What's up? Marsh Pod. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, first off, thank you to uh, to Big Bob. I apologize for the for the week long hiatus as uh, Florida got impacted here with uh, with Hurricane Nicole. Um, so a, bi- a big thank you for Bob for for filling in um, regarding his comments about um, and his speculation about me being a super. Look, I can't confirm nor deny that. So um, that's uh, it's just you know. Think what you want to think there. I'll, uh, I'll let you do the, uh, do the observations. So being that we missed a week, I kind of just want to do a lot of one-hitters, uh, basically on all the, on the, the news that went on uh, over the past week. So um, get through every little item. Um, not going to dive into too much. I think I'm going to save that for Thursday's issue. Um, but did want to get to all the, the things in order uh, that came out. So I want to start with DJ Wagner going to the originators. I think this is an awesome opportunity for him to shine. Um, Bob mentioned it, and I think he was he was point on. Uh, he's going to be given an opportunity to show off some of his off-ball skill set. At this level, a lot of guys have really established themselves as ISO players, and the difference, most every player at the next level and beyond college and into the NBA is going to be able to play ISO basketball. If you can operate off the ball, you're going to have a much better greater career and you look at the difference between guys like Steph Curry and Trey Young. Very similar on ball skill set, but Steph Curry has done immensely better at establishing himself off the ball. There's obviously time for Trey Young. They're not the same age. They're not even remotely in the same points in their career. But Steph Curry has established himself with such an innate ability to get free and score without needing the basketball to do it initially. This is going to give not only Wagner an opportunity to showcase his abilities there, but also develop them if they're not to the point that they really need to be. Uh, Dalen Cartagena to the bad boys. They need an additional defense. They need an athleticism. Cartagena brings both of those, so I like the signing. I don't think he's going to turn heads. I don't think he's going to be an elite player, but from an immediate bad boys need standpoint, I like that. And we'll get more into the bad boys in a a minute. Uh, Mackenzie and Baco to the Gotham Five. They have a lot of wings, um, but they also have a lot of mid players, right? There's not a guy that you look like you look at on Gotham Five. You say that's the person that you build around. You entered last season with Coach Pilardi with a guy that you could say we could turn to this dude. This is a guy that can carry us. You had Shea King, um, who was immediately. The first name off the board where you're saying this would watch out. Gotham 5 doesn't have that type of ability. So if um, Baco becomes that, I think he can be. He's in an environment with uh, with Bellardi that creates a very high ceiling for players with potential. Back to bad boys, and this is kind of a dual one because the Lorenzo Phenom, the initial news was that he was going to leave bad boys for LSD. And then it came out later after that never was reported that Loveless may leave LSD for bad boys. I'll hit it from the 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 uh, phenom point first. I told you from the initial onset this was possible, and I, also, I saw Air Jalen mention it. I think it was Big Bob mentioned it as well. These coaches cannot take for granted the players that they have on their roster. That's that's the biggest thing. If you have a good player on your roster, guess what you need to do? You need to make sure that you have all the pieces in place, and you continue to recruit that guy. Clearly, Munch Williams was not doing that. Now. Here's my issue with both of these. With Phenom saying he's going to leave for LSD, and now Loveless, who's going to say he's going to not even coach a game for LSD, and he's going to go to Bad Boys. They are both showing that they're not committed as a player and as a coach, and that's terrible on both sides. If I go to play for Coach Loveless, if I'm a player, if I'm a, if I'm a parent, Who's to say that he's not going to leave in a week because he's clearly proven that this is something that he's going to do. So this is a terrible, terrible look for Coach Brian Loveless. This is an issue that I want to get into more on Thursday's episode. But this is a really bad look for Brian Loveless. It's not as bad of a look for Lorenzo Phenom. He's allowed to want to play for where he wants to play and what's going to allow him to be successful. But for Brian Loveless to go from Bay Area and then to LSD and now he's flirting with going to Bad Boys... It's a terrible look for him, and truthfully, it's a terrible look for Simrod as a whole to allow this to happen, to allow players, or rather to allow coaches, to just pick up and run without any sign of commitment. And we're going to get to that a little bit later on as well. There needs to be some form of commitment responsibility for the coach's standpoint. Um, I don't think the players should necessarily be signed to contracts because there's no money going their way. And there's not necessarily money going to the coaches at this point in time. They need some form of you said you're going to go here you can't just jump ship because it's not going the way you want 
Speaking of coaching, Bellardi steps down as the SimWorld uh, Hoops Coaching Associate Chairman. This is I'm a little concerned about because I, I think Bellardi gave the future of the organization and the association specifically direction. He's a vital piece to it. So I'm curious if there are other things happening, any ulterior motives that is not being revealed yet. I'm not reporting that. It's just insert Brian Windhorst. What's going on here? Why'd they do that? Why did Bellardi leave? I, I'm a little worried about what that means for the for the future. Um, there was four signings, Kashan Western to Heartland, Camarion Goodyear to the Beasts of the East, Sandro Speed to Cascadia, and then Camarion Bracken to Run DMV. Overall, I don't think a lot of these guys jump off the table as guys to watch, um, and I think it's why, at least for uh, Keshawn Weston and Goodyear, they were kind of underreported, kind of looped into the headlines of the day. Um, they didn't get their own pullout. I think that's that's indicative of the type of player both of them are. They're depth guys, right? Um, it's a good get for, for J6 in, in Heartland. You needed to add that. Um, but Camarion Goodyear's the same thing. They're good signings. They're depth signings. They're not we go higher. Uh, for Cascadia, Sandro Speed, Finn Hayes, he's stocking up on wings. Um, Speed's smaller. He's six foot three, so he can play the wing. He can also play the guard. Um, Cascadia doesn't have a ton of guards, so from a depth standpoint, I like the signing. But again, I don't think that the ceiling for Cascadia because of Sandro Speed goes up any higher um, from that as a signing. Uh, Camarion and Bracken, Myra Murray's done a really good job with guards. You have to wonder, um, though... It's not really a position of need. They continue to be linked um, to Kingy Cross. I think that could happen, um, but it's a focus, I think, that Murray's going to have to have on getting wings and bigs to fill out the roster because right now it's, it's just guard heavy. Um, so that's, that's, that's a little hesitancy on that signing, but maybe there's some other um, factors that, that, that's going into that decision. All right, Chad Smith to Showtime, and this is, I'm nervous, and it's a similar point that we made just a second ago that I'm going to dive into later on about Brian Loveless. Chad Smith, just a couple months ago, left the Yacht Club, and it was reported after he signed with Showtime that his departure was health-related, which I'm not one to question health. Certainly health should be a priority, but the biggest health-related stepping down that I can remember was Urban Meyer. Uh, stepping down from, uh, from I think it was Florida the first time. No, it was Florida the first time. I think he did it there. Definitely did it from Ohio State with, well, I've got some heart concerns. You know, my, my heart, I just can't do it health-wise. A year later, he's in Ohio State following Florida. A year later, he's in Jacksonville following Ohio State. So here's my concern. I'm just going to come on and say it. Maybe this is wrong to say. But the health-related, I'm stepping down for health-related concerns, is what every coach has ever said when they just don't want to coach there anymore. It's that simple. Chad Smith, if you didn't want to coach at Yacht Club, step down. Don't hide behind a health-related concern. Because here's why I don't believe in the health-related concern. And again, maybe maybe egg on my face in a couple days. This is going to be a hot take when he comes out with some legitimate reason that he, the humidity of South Florida was just destroying his pores. If you had a health issue that made it so that you couldn't coach a basketball team, you were plagued enough, you had to step down, you had to leave, that health issue is now just gone? Los Angeles has that much better of a health system that you can coach there instead of Miami, both major metropolitan areas? You couldn't have played things out where you were and just said, look, I either don't want to be here, or if you actually got through your health-related concern, that meant you couldn't coach, you're already past it. You couldn't have stepped down or, or said, hey, I just need to take a minute away from the team, but I intend to return after this health issue. It was so bad that you couldn't coach in Miami, but not bad enough that you could come back a month later and coach in Los Angeles. I'm not impressed by that. I'm concerned. Yeah, they have a better top-end talent in Jason Tata. I would believe in Showtime. But this is this is concerning for me from a who is Chad Smith standpoint. Because you don't want to coach in Miami, clearly, or some health concern is so bad that you just can't do it in Miami, but somehow it's good enough or you're under control enough now to do it in Los Angeles. Uh, color me not impressed. Uh, Norman Nations to LSD. I said it already. It's a good job of keeping local talent. It's a good signing if Phenom joins the team. I'm kind of wondering, though, if Norman Nations is saying, hey, I'm going to go play for Munch Williams. If Munch Williams is out and now Brian Loveless is going to step in, does Norman Nations still want to be there? I mean, this is all these coaching changes were kind of overlooking the fact that recruiting is ongoing with active coaches. So to kind of like extend back to that 
um, a Brian Loveless issue, if Loveless is going to leave, why the hell would I join LSD as a potential recruit? And if I'm potentially looking to go to bad boys, why the hell would I join if my coach is going to be different than the one that's recruited me? I don't like either way. Bay Area announced their jerseys. I said this one as well. They're great. They're, they're not great. They're not bad. They're in the middle. Good enough. The facility, however, the facility, very becoming of the Bay. I think it should attract local talent to want to play there, to want to stay there. Even if it's not Bay Area specifically, extended Bay Area, Pacific Northwest, I think Cascadia Rain and Trace should have some concern about keeping talent. When you look at that facility, Los Angeles, we haven't seen what their facilities look like um, down there for Showtime. I like Bay Area's facilities, not so much the jerseys. Historical moment, Jay Lust joins uh that's the first VU to Simworld Hoops. First off, congratulations to Jay Lust. This is a historical moment, not only for him, but also for the league. He will always now be remembered as the first player ever, just like any other first of his kind has ever been a part of something. This is this is great. In the archives of Simworld Hoops, Jay Lust will be remembered as the first ever VU player. That is awesome. That is a that is a monumental movement. As an extension, Malachi Booth is leaning towards Asia Pacific. This could be a direct correlation. We haven't seen it drawn out like that, but I think it could be a direct correlation to the signing of Jay Lust. And I think coaches need to pay attention to behind-the-scenes relationships that players have with one another. We've talked about Myron Murray, and, and, and others have talked in more depth, about Myron Murray having an inside track to both Kingy Crosses because you coach Cooper one year. That stuff matters. And so I think coaches need to pay attention to who a player plays well with, who a player gets along with. You can't just say, well, this player, they're, they're not siloed in their approaches. You need to be able to understand the kind of inner workings. And the most recent news, Khalil Erickson, we're recording this midday Sunday, so more news could certainly come out, but Khalil Erickson to the Yacht Club. I like this saying, signing from a reputation and rep, uh, redemption standpoint, right? Erickson, he's got a lot to prove. He did not leave DMV in the best of situations. This, I need the ball more. Bro, you play with Cooper Kingy Cross, okay? You don't need the ball more. You need to understand who the best player in the nation is and who the best player on your roster is. So chill out on that. But he's going to go to to Miami. Um, you've got Dominic Bianco, who I might argue is the better player. Um, but at least you're going to get an opportunity to redeem yourself. I like this. What he's going to need to show is, can he be mature? Can he show maturity? Because that's going to decide the future of his career. If he can work better within a system, if he can work better with a coach and, and understand his location and what his role needs to be on a team, I think this could work out great. All right, that's it for this pod. Again, big, massive thank you to Big Bob uh, for filling in last week. We'll be back on Thursday. Like I said, I want to dive a little bit more into Brian Loveless. All right, peace.